But first, I'd like to introduce our guest, who is actually the normal coast for Project Bring Me to Life. And hello, are you there? Hello. Can you guys can you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you. We can't see you. Uh, okay. Hi. Can you see me now? Yeah. There you are. So, hello. Welcome to your own podcast, sort of. <laughs> this is really weird. I am I feel a little weird because I'm more nervous like being a guest than I am for being a host. Well, I think it's really important that we give you a chance to explain your story and how the project itself got started because you are the director and producer of all the stuff that got us to where we are now, and it's important to share that information. So it's actually my honor to get to interview you on your first mm -hmm. podcast that you've had an interview on. <laughs> I'm really happy that you're doing it, too. It's awesome. So for anybody that's watching, how about you tell us who you are, where you come from, and what your purpose is here. Oh, all right. Um, First of all, I want to say thank you, Ashton, for the meditation. Really helped me uh, strengthen my vibration. I suppose. All day. Thank you for liking it. Thank you for resonating. Yeah. Um. Are oh, you okay over there? Um. <laughs> I just got a call on my interview right now because it's the uh, first time I've ever been interviewed on a podcast, so uh, apologies for any nervousness I may throw off there. But I have incarnated here on Earth for 27 times, and the roles that I've played have varied, obviously. Um, some of the roles were a lot harder than others because I had a level of vibration of the collective. Which um, it seems a little weird. Why would you want to lower vibration, um, or especially the the collective? Um, but that reason is to learn and to expand and to grow and to be able to strengthen ourselves when we're in that lower vibration. Um, and other roles have been greatly uh, creating a high vibration. Um, so. Uh, well, right now in this incarnation, I, I go by Silamon to a lot of people who are awakened, um, as some of us like to call it. Uh, but my birth name was Christopher Sam McCloughlin, and um, that's the name that my parents gave me. Um, I am from Antares. I'm from the Antares star system. That's where I incarnated here on Earth from. Um, but when I incarnated in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and lived in Michigan for most of my life, and now I'm in Maryland, so that's where I'm from. I believe I covered the my purpose when I was talking about incarnations. Well, that's pretty impressive purpose. Do you would you like to explain how you got your your name Silman and why you prefer it over Christopher? Yeah. Uh, well. 2011 was a pretty interesting year, but 2012 was something that really kicked off strongly on my path. And in October 2012, I got this message on a computer while I was at work, and it's and it talked about um, an event called the Moment, and the Moment was a Native American ceremony in uh, at Mount Monotaka, which is in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and it was supposed to be this prophecy being fulfilled, and they talked about. Um, Creating a portal for the collective to pretty much transcend separation. Um, it was a moment to, to create a really strong high vibration for the entire planet. And the the friends that I I was there with um, about like six or seven of us really resonated and hung out the entire two days that the event was. And, um, the very last night. We were talking in a big circle, and somebody asked me how I spelled my name, and my name was spelled C-L-O-S-S-O-N, so C-L-O, and then we were talking about the Russ Fiery movement, so 
Silamon was an addition to that Silo. Well, that's pretty awesome. Um, would you say that it has a spiritual meaning for you, Ben? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, definitely. Especially since, uh, especially since it was, you know, at a an event where it was raising the vibration of the planet. That is a very spiritual mission, and the fact that I was around all these people who were awakened, you know, in that same path that I was. Uh, we were very open with each other about our spirituality and our beliefs, and um, so it was a very spiritual family. And uh, the name is is also very spiritual. Well, you're obviously a very spiritual person, but from my own personal knowing of you, you're also very religious. Would you care to explain how um, spirituality and religion are so important for you, and what the difference to you may be between them, and why yeah. it's important to push both? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I grew when I grew up. Um, my family was Christian. Uh, all, my entire family was Christian. Um, on my mom and my dad's side. So going to church every Sunday was uh, something that I would say was required. Actually, we didn't have a we didn't have a choice to get here or not. But um, just at that point in time, I. I really opened up my heart to Jesus, you know. And then when you, when a lot of people hear that, they're like, "Oh God!" But, um, Jesus is an ascended master, you know, and he has an abundant amount, an infinite amount of love. And so tapping into that is something I did at an early age. It's really kept me in close contact, or kept me in my relationship with my own personal God. Was, you know something that happened early on. Um, religion can be taken a few different ways. There's a lot of different religions, and um, I feel throughout the industrial age or through some pretty heavy shifts, um, some of the, the people that were in power tried to take over religion and turn it into something that was controlling masses instead of allowing us to, to find our spirituality on our own and be open to that spirituality something that they kind of like forced upon me. Um, mainly the, the difference is that with religion, it's more refined. Um, there's more of a... I'm trying to find the right words because this is a very touchy, very touchy subject. Uh, but I'll just go with my own... My own uh, um, I didn't mean to make it touchy. Just basically, I, I know you're both spiritual and religious, and I know that those are two very important things to you and that you would like to, to share. So I just just wanted to touch it a little bit for you and give you an opportunity to explain pretty much your story, and you did it very well. Thank you. Uh, um, go ahead. Uh, I would say spirituality is like, it, it feels like something that's more open. And religion is like, um, I'm trying to think of something, uh, I can't really think of what to, what, what words to use, but you can be spiritual without being religious. You can believe in a higher power and spirit without having to, to be confined to one specific religion that you might resonate with. Um, but, you know, there's no knock on any, anybody who's Christian or or Muslim, or Hindu. Um, I'm a heavy believer that you can open up yourself and learn a lot of spiritual things from religion. And so, um, like in California, we went to a Jewish temple every, every week for two weeks and learn from them. And so in 2012, a lot of religious teachers were helping me in my path. We're talking a lot about your 2012 trip. Would you... Um, so first, I want to tell everybody that is watching that they, they can enter a question for you before the end so that um, we can get some questions rolling in. I'll be checking the, the Facebook as well as the chat and email. So if you can send me questions in any of those ways, that would be awesome. Um, but back to what you were saying, you were talking a lot about your trip. Could you tell us pretty much how Project Room Your Life started and what all happened for you in 2012? Yeah. Well, the project got started in 2011. Um, 
And that was in the summertime. So actually around May is what my Facebook page said. Um, and that's where I like posted the first name for it. Good old Facebook back in our lives. <laughs> well, um, the reason why I started Project Bring Me Life was because I was just oh, having this crazy awakening. I'm, I'm, I'm working, and even though I'm like, what I feel like I'm having fun, I, I wasn't really exploring myself in, in too much of a spiritual way, um, just confined to like the matrix or the fact that anything physical, it was like I was being distracted by material things and not focusing on anything spiritual or anything within. And so I started Project Bring Me Life originally to be a documentary, not really much else, but like a documentary of my awakening. There's some videos of that from the starting point on YouTube, correct? What's that? There's starting videos of the, the original project on YouTube already, right? Yeah. The, the very first... Um, documentary video that I, I posted uh, of my travel from Michigan to Colorado is on the front page of the website. Um, so you can check that out there. And that was a documentary in 2011. I tried to make one in 2012. There was a trailer for it. Unfortunately, at the very end of the year, I was on my way back from California, and Greyhound literally left me with nothing but a blanket when I got back to Michigan. So my camera was gone after after that. That's really sad because I know how important your footage and documenting your trips and travels are to you. So luckily now we are able to stay organized and keep that from happening. So we can document it all. Yeah, you for sure have been helping me a lot with that. And um, I, I got, the reason why I wasn't too upset with it was because. I felt like I was getting rid of any identity that I had, so it would have been cool to to video and document it. Um, but when I got back, I was with Nick Bryce, and we the first thing we did was grab a bunch of stuff, and we went to the woods, and we burned all of we burned my high school diploma, we burned uh, some things that like identified me um, as something, <laughs> and. I burned a book that I was writing while I was awakening, um, and I did want to mention Andrew Peck because he he was there when I originally started it, and he was helping me a lot with that. So I did want to throw that out there. That's awesome. Um, speaking of identity, I did want to touch on we've just even in the last couple of weeks watching the podcast grow with you. I've I've seen your identity and personal appearance change a lot. Does that have anything to do with your awakening or? your job or anything? Would you like to talk about why you do all these changes all the time? Yeah. Ever since I was a little kid, I, I loved um, just expressing that throughout myself through you know, cutting my hair or wearing something weird or, you know, just anything like that. My clothes were something I loved to, to get crazy with. Um, and it is, it does have to do with with my my path and my transformations because as I'm transforming within, I transform without and my appearance changes with that. And right now what I am working on within is getting more, um, just better and better uh, quality, I guess. Um, I'm trying to stay more professional with Project Bring Me Life and uh, I want to portray a professionalism out to people so that when I talk about my spiritual path, when I talk about channeling, um, I want people to take me seriously. And when I dressed all crazy, it was because I, I just wanted to make people look at me and be like, I don't know, think something weird, or just I loved challenging stereotypes because I could dress like some hardcore dude, but then be like the nicest person, and I love that. Um, but now I'm getting to a phase where I want to help as many people as possible, and so I want as many people as possible to feel comfortable with me. And so my, my changing is due to the fact that I want to be as serious and as legitimate as possible with everything that I'm doing right now. 
it's okay. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it. Speaking of, okay, so we've covered your appearance. We've covered how the <laughs> you're having so much fun. I'm glad that you get to have fun on your own podcast and not be here. Good job. Yeah. You're doing Thank it. You. Um, let's see. So if anybody is watching, then we would love questions to be sent in. And since we're going to have questions sent in, how about we talk a little bit about what the actual giveaway is. Um, so from what I gather, you're giving away a channeling with Archangel Michael. Is that correct? Yes. Um, one of the giveaways that I wanted to do was a free half an hour session with uh, channel Archangel Michael through myself. Um, so it doesn't matter if you've ever had a channeling before or whatever. Um, I can explain the process, and then I just want to open up communication. Um, the archangels have been coming to me a lot to say that they want to talk to people, and and they want me to to be like a messenger in in, in ways that just allowing this physical vehicle to hold. Uh, space for those energies to come through and express themselves to whoever may be um, seeking out that uh, interaction. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna get there to ask you um, a little bit about your archangel experiences. But um, one more thing I wanted to say is at the end we are also gonna do our our walking stick giveaway. Yeah, can I show it? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I don't, can't really see it too well. But oh, we got Nick Monicki. He has joined the video call. I don't know how that happened. But here it is. Here's the walking stick. You see it? I see it. That's awesome. It's, it's the crooked one because we had the crooked pole winning. Yeah. And so we're giving this one away. And it was uh, carved by myself and worked on by... Both of us. So. It's going to have a leather handle, and I will get to the winner here momentarily. But, hi, Nick Monaghy. I'm glad you made it in. Good job. Hi, everyone, family. Nice <laughs> to see you guys again. Hi, Nick. See you. So we're in the middle of Silo's interview, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how his um, relationship is with arguing with Michael and how he's able to channel him and a little bit more about that. Awesome. Okay. Love to hear. Um, so my relationship with arguing with Michael, um, I didn't really notice it until 2012 when I was on that trip. Um, that I, I talk about a lot with the Eternal Tribe. Um, I was in San Francisco at the time and I was heavy on psychedelics, I'd say. Um, and be careful with those. If you're going to use them, use them with um, good intention and pure intention. Um, but I was in San Francisco, and some vision came to me of the Tree of Life, and I found myself walking into Golden Gate Park. I saw this big portal, and it was a, in a peace sign, and it was made out of tons of pain and chalk and whatever else. And I just sat in the middle of it and was like, I want to hear the voice of God. And I want to hear you talk to me right now. And that is it, like this powerful energy just like shot down and like exploded through my heart chakra. And we started talking. And at first it was, I was speaking out loud and he was replying in my head. And then we like reversed it to where I would ask the questions in my head and he would speak out loud and it he was very poetic and it was very beautiful, you know. And he was like, I am Archangel Michael. Um <laughs> I can't really say it right now, but and it was so so amazing, so beautiful and a lot of good things to say and ever since then I've just been really connected with him and I'll often um ask to, to channel um, him and he comes through all the time. And what does that mean? Can you explain channeling for someone who may not understand what you mean by channeling him? Okay, so everybody's channeling right now. Uh, we're just channeling expressions of you know what we consider to be ourselves. Um, 
when we're skateboarding, we could be channeling some, uh, you know, crazy, awesome energy. And when you're in that state, you, you're just like in a pure bliss state, and you know you're channeling something. Uh, a lot of people do it in the kingdom. Um, but you can channel the archangels, and what I mean by that is you can open up um, your physical tools, like your voice, to the archangels, and they'll come and they'll speak. But your mouth will be moving, your voice box will be vibrating, but it won't be your your energy. It won't be your voice. It'll be the voice of one of the angels, and they'll be speaking in a different way, and expressing in a different way. Um, so channeling them is like you know, just having a crazy realistic communication. <laughs> so basically, the winner of our of our giveaway is gonna get to hear what the angels have to say for them, and you're going to be able to just provide them with some clairvoyance into that. Yeah. It's, awesome. kind of like, um, it's kind of like using tarot cards. You just hear a voice instead of see a picture or read a word. Which I'm going to do a card reading here in a little bit, and the reading is epic, and I'm excited to share it with everybody. I'm excited to hear. It's going to be awesome. Um, let's see. So we're still... Going to take questions, and we have the walking stick giveaway in just a couple more questions. Um, Nick, did, since you just kind of chimed in, would you, do you have any questions real quick for Sila? Always have questions. First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you for being the great friend that you are. I'm very appreciative since this all started back way before I was talking to you or Ashton when we met on that fateful day on Facebook. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's what a journey it's been for all of us. But a question would be, aside from going in yourself and bringing forth these beings, in particular Archangel Michael, what... Are you mo what do you enjoy most to open up to in, in specific, or maybe not in specific? Mm -hmm. Like perhaps parkour, or you know, going on a walk, or eating, you know, wh whatever, whatever you might want to. Yeah. Well, I'll say this winter will be snowboarding. Uh, I am an adrenaline junkie, and nice. I just love doing extreme sports of any kind, uh, and I, I love walks, and I love music, and I love playing music, and uh, I mean, anything that's artful, painting, pretty much everything that is featured on the, the website is everything that I love doing the most, like flow art. Nice, I love enjoying your enjoyment. <laughs> Yeah. How about another okay. quick question? Go for it. So in in the morning, in the middle of the day, and at nighttime, are there specific things that you do that you would rather do in one of those labels more so than another one? At night? Any, anything like that? Uh, like... But, like, I know Ashton loves to meditate when he wakes up in the morning. And I love to meditate right before bed at night. Like, kind of, both of us do the same thing, but at a different time of the day, because the energies are different. But, like, we all probably do it in different times. But just something like that. Any morning, middle of the day, nighttime kind of rituals, if you will. Hmm. Okay. Um, in the... In the Early morning, I like to read a little bit of Aragon. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, he loves the Aragon. I love me some Aragon. Um, and I and okay, so that and then also listening to those motivational videos in the morning are very powerful. I just they help me so much, and I enjoy them so much. Oh yeah. Hey, Ashton, did you have a question for Cielo? 
I have a question for you. Um, what's the most exciting place that you've traveled to? Or, like, what was the... M I'll just leave it at that. What was the most exciting place you've traveled to? Uh, thanks. Um, I, I would say Hawaii, but everybody knows how amazing that is. Um, I'm going to say Mount Shasta, California. Mm. The mountains there are incredible. I literally felt like I was in low things, especially when our van almost drifted off into uh, the abyss of the mountains. Um, just like is the vibration is ridiculous. There's a Lemurian city underground mountain, and they post their stuff everywhere around the city. That's where the home of the 13th Crystal Skull is. Um, just Mount Shasta is crazy awesome. So go there and you will not be disappointed. Yeah, amen. I think Mount Shasta is one of the most potent places on Earth. I've heard it's the crown chakra of the Earth. I heard that as well. Amazing. Thank you. Right now, we are going to make a pact that we will visit Mount Shasta together 2015. <laughs> Dude, I say it's part of healing tour. What do you say? Yeah. You make it part of healing tour. Yes. yes. That's yes. Great. <laughs> in case anybody who doesn't know what healing tour is, we're trying to get a tour together where we stop in a couple of places next year with the obvious the podcast crew and some more of our people. And anybody that has information on good ways to do that or promote that or get on that, we would love to hear from you. That would be epic. Yes. Um, so help us help you. We want to come to you. <laughs> um, so I let them ask questions. I had a couple more questions for you, and then I was going to go to the space weather segment. If that sounds cool, which is very beautiful radio. So do it. Awesome. Well, real quick, um, at Frequinox, you taught a workshop on astral projection. Would you like to explain what that is and how you do it, and just a little bit about that? Yeah. SRO, astral projection. Nice hat, Ashton. Good job. I'm a witch. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a witch. <laughs> All right, Sula, what's astral projection? Okay, astral projection is literally projecting your awareness or your focus out of your body. So you're not even inside of your body. Basically, you have a, a spirit body or a uh, a lot of people like to call an astral body, and it's made up of pure energy, um, and it's a body that overlays on top of your physical body, and when you connect with that fully, you can get out of your physical body and be in the astral realm, which is um, a higher vib vibratory uh, plane, so it looks kind of like the physical plane, but there's a lot more stuff because it's a higher vibration, you can fly and go to different places, and um, yeah. some people could do it, and a lot of people do it when they're dreaming and they don't even realize it. So um, they'll come back and say, "Oh, I had this crazy experience with this like Zen master," <laughs> and hmm. it's literally an astral projection. Awesome. Uh, what do you have one? a favorite place to go? Um. I like to go to the very center of the universe, and that's where I take a lot of people on uh, any guided meditations that I make available to people. Pretty cool. I know when I astral project, I like to put myself in a room and then kind of zoom to wherever, but it sounds way more often. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to do a, a favorite segment here soon. Um, I think I think I might wait till we have our mustaches on for that one. Okay. Does that sound good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So real quick before we get into all that, I want to give a last chance for anyone to send in questions. I am checking Facebook and the website through the chat and the email, which is bring you to like project at gmail dot com. Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. so any of those options? <laughs> I think we have a couple coming. I'm excited for them. And before we go to questions, let's talk music. Yes. We all love music. Um, 
music. So your music or your instrument of choice is the ukulele. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You have your ukulele. <laughs> I have my ukulele. Awesome. Would you like to tell us when you started playing the ukulele, and would you be interested in playing with something? Yeah. Uh, I started playing right after I got back from Hawaii in 2013. Okay. Very first thing I bought with uh, my, I believe it was my candy bar at this uh, flower place. And the first thing I bought was a ukulele. And what inspired you to do that? Uh, well, mainly uh, along my trip on through California, I, I played a lot of music and it was very inspiring. And just for some reason, I would always say to people uh, that were with me, I'm going to I'm going to learn how to play the ukulele and go around across the world and play my ukulele and brighten up people's people's days and brighten up people's lives and make them feel good about themselves again. So, and you're going to play something for us? Yeah. Should I do that right now? You totally should. If I knew where the studio button was, I would change it for you. Holy sh... Oh, i got to be careful with this precious... Um, okay. okay, I found it. Awesome. You pressed. You got it. Can me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does it sound any different? Uh, a, little, a little bit. Cool. Can I ask a second? Okay. Yes, that's, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Let me do that. And also, and also you probably, probably know the new views because you inspire me by many early What's that? Alright, you inspired me to get a ukulele and play it. Nice. That's so cool. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. It'll just echo forever if we didn't. <laughs> but that's awesome. It was fun watching you guys both play ukulele at uh, 3DL. We had a whole room full of ukuleles. There were like eight of them at one point. That was so funny. Everybody but me in this chat room had a ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh. Kind of jealous. Amazing. <laughs> All right. So we do have a winner for the question and a question for you. Okay. But first of all, thanks a lot for playing that song. I'm really glad that you had a chance to do that for everybody. Yeah. It sounded a lot better when I was practicing at work today. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure <laughs> everybody at work loved it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I thought it sounded so good. Oh, good. <laughs> well, it's either he sings that or Christmas carols. He's already started on Christmas carols, guys. Uh, Let's do both. Do it. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So, I don't have the fancy screen share that Celia usually has for questions, but we do have a question, and it's from Samantha. So, yay, Samantha. Yay. Thank you, Samantha. She sent in a question, and she will win the channeling. So I hope Michael has amazing things to tell you as always. But the question she has for you is, is there a place with spiritual significance you would like to go that you haven't been yet? This is inspired by the Mount Shasta conversation. Also, I'm not sure if this is the same question, but I think so. Do you have any advice on some techniques for remembering past incarnations? Mm. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, some place that I'd like to give. Um, is, was it? Did the question uh, confine it to Earth? Um, I don't think so. I think you should just tell us what resonates with you because that's what you tell us all the time. Ooh, yeah, for sure. So, um, that's if you're talking about Earth, if you were, just say it in the chat, and I'll uh, refine my question. But uh, some place that I would like to go that with spiritual significance. Is um, Antares start flying in? Because uh, I know that's where I would say I, I fractaled off from. Um, but I just, I feel like there's some information that I I would would like to hear from there, or just I don't know learn learn more about the entire star system. Um, yeah. And Saturn. I'd like to go to Saturn. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, do you have any advice on the techniques for the past incarnation? Yeah, definitely. Um, you can meditate on it, and um, you could get a reply back, or you could just meditate on it and ask the angels or any other uh, energies or beings that you love, that you you like to work with, and just ask them to send you signs, and they could come in signs of, like, a book or a number. Um, so the way that I found out was I kept asking over and over again, and um, and the number 27 kept coming up. And uh, so I was talking to somebody about past incarnations, and she was like, how many did you say 27? And I was like, I didn't say anything, actually. So that's weird. And... Um, even after that, I was like, I was thinking about it. I wonder if 27 is the right number. And then I saw the number 27 as I was driving by. Um, so they could come in the form of synchronicities, or you can go out and explore uh, in meditation. Um, I could, you know. <laughs> do you like to share what um, a few of your incarnations had to do with or may have been or anything like that? Or anything about uh, your I, incarnation? Yeah, I have played uh, a few a few roles and sometimes I don't like saying it because I, I don't know why you know like people who think I'm crazy but um, <laughs> not us not us okay so Sol Solomon King Solomon from uh, the Bible was uh, one of them and so I found it interesting that my middle name or Cecilia my name is like similarly spelled um 
Christopher Columbus is the one that has been a lot of uh, uh, balancing out karma. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Merlin has come up as the past. I was going to say, that was probably my favorite. <laughs> but um, that was interesting because a lot of people have also been uh, incarnated as that being. So a lot of us have shared their soul in the Merlin uh, story. Um, um, we had a conversation once that resonated a lot with me on how um, how when multiple people feel they've been incarnated into the, the same person, how they could have been a part of that person or something, mm -hmm. someone so close to that person that their frequencies meshed with that in history. Do, yeah. you, do you still believe in that or anything? Would you like to okay. elaborate on that? Definitely. There could be some like some cells that were on the physical body of that person, and like it eventually evolved into a whole a whole being itself. Um, but some people are like just little parts of the person. Um, some people have significant uh, influence on that on that role. So other also like people could have shared the body and just been a greater soul and greater vibration. That fractaled off into this uh, into this reality. Yeah, um, I like to think uh, I like to think that since the, the frequencies are all kind of meshing together at this point, that um, people go down in history with whatever frequencies they resonate the most with in that lifetime. So even if, um, say, since, since I'm a female, if I would have reincarnated into a female life time before that I wouldn't have known because a lot of them weren't put down into history that I'm going to probably resonate with the most um, commonly heard person that was close to the person I really may have been. So if you don't know who that person was, they might not have a name. So you would say like Merlin and it could have been like his best friend or anything like that. 